before the guide starts, I just want to come out with an update. Uh, this is about a week after I made the uh, the guide, and they changed the way that you do the neutral bash. I'll show you guys real quick. You get a follow up light, so the bash itself doesn't actually deal damage. You'll see in a couple seconds here when I let the video play out. But uh, I just wanted to get back to you guys and show you that. You have to confirm a light after the neutral bash after you hit your guard break button. But you can still do the double bash. However, it's not guaranteed. Uh, so it's a little bit different. But I'll put a timestamp on the screen so you guys can skip to the parts that actually matter. But uh, just to see the way the old Ocelot played. Um, I'll just uh, let it roll out. So, Yo, what's going on you guys? Hope y'all doing well. Today I want to make a guide for the uh, Ocelotl hero that just came out. Uh, whether you guys are paying uh, real money for him or you're waiting the two week period where you get him for 15,000 steel. Um, either way, uh, I just want to make a quick guide that's pretty simple. Uh, try not to boggle uh, everyone's minds that are watching this too much because he's got a little bit to him. But if you break it down, it's really not that bad. So to get into it, uh, if you dodge forward and hit your guard break button, you're going to a bash. A neutral bash, which is 10 damage. But you can do a follow up if you do guard break and hit the guard break button again. Do a double bash and if you look on the bottom left you can see the combat log where it displays the damage and that second one that i just did did 22 damage so if you get a total like if you get the combo of the neutral and you get this one that's 32 damage right there and that's actually pretty good as far as my understanding is this is the only character that we have in the game that does that type of uh double bash which is interesting and it works uh usually you'll see it work a lot more in uh 44s and it's pretty good for stun lock and then let your teammate get a hit on him and so forth and so forth um, but anyways, he's also got some dodge attacks that are pretty cool. So if you dodge forward and light, he's got that that does 15 damage. And you can also do him to the side. So if they block it, it's 3. But if they if you hit him with that, it's 14. Just a standard dodge attack, and that's with the light. So if you do heavy, my guy's doing nothing. So just to keep that in mind. And that's pretty much it from neutral. Uh, everything else is kind of in the chain. So we're just going to try to get into it. We're going to go ahead and uh, take away the bot here real quick. And we'll try it again. So without getting too complicated with everything, uh, you can start off with your chain like heavy light. You can go heavy light again, and you can just keep spamming that, and it's never gonna end, All right? Unless unless they block the light. So the light in the chain is really fast. So this light right here, that's 500 milliseconds. But if I do light light, that second one is 400, and that's pretty quick. I have a hard time trying to even block those. Uh, I don't think I've ever even attempted pairing one of them. But basically, just to break this down, is if you do the same move. So if I do heavy, heavy, my chain ends right there. So that's the same input twice. So even if I do uh, light, light, my chain ends right there. Even though we killed the bot, but that's okay. So if I do light, light, that's it. I can't do anything else after that. So if I do heavy, heavy, I'm done. However, I can change it to light, heavy, oh, well, let's try it again. I could do heavy, light, heavy, light, heavy, but then heavy, and it's done. So for the most part, that's what you got going on with uh, the light and the heavy button. Now, he's also got a zone that you can put in the mix-up, so you could do uh, heavy into zone, and that'll kill. I'm going to actually turn the uh, bot's health off right here. So I could do heavy, zone, light, heavy, light, I can zone again, I can do heavy, and I can end right there. However, it's the same concept with the zone. So if you do zone into zone, that ends right there. So even in chain, heavy, zone, into zone, I'm done. Now you may be thinking, uh, if you haven't already seen that is, maybe thinking, well, that's not really great offense, I don't think, but uh, there's a little bit more. If you, uh, after anything in the chain, so even if I light and hit the guard break button, I'm going to do a bash like that. And it's not going to show in the log because I have his health off, but it does 18 damage. So if I do light, bash, 18, or I could do heavy, hit the guard break button, that's 18 right there. Or I can even do zone, which is uh, your light and heavy button at the same time, like that, and hit the guard break button, that'll do 18 right there. And that's pretty good. However, it's got the same property as if you did this in the beginning. Where it does the double bash. So I could do I could do heavy, guard break, and then guard break again. And I'll do that move. And that's some good damage to be honest with you. So I can even do it with a light. So light, guard break, guard break right there. However, if you have somebody that likes to dodge that bash, so I do a zone, whatever, and I'll do this, but they like to dodge that. It's actually feignable. So you could do any attack, and then the same button that you use to normally feint your heavies the same thing so i'll do a heavy and i'll faint that you can guard break them you can get your heavy off and you go into it again 
and it's all sorts of uh, fast uh, mind games uh, type of mix-up. It's pretty crazy. Um, one more thing that I want to talk about. It's a little bit... Um, I don't know if I can describe this right, but if I do a... Uh, if I do a light into that there, but if I try to do... Let's see if I can describe this. Yeah, if I do that second bash, but if they dodge the second bash, after this first one, if you throw the light, there is... I don't think it's even physically possible to dodge that second bash if you throw the light after the first bash. So first bash, and then I light right there. Instead of doing this, uh, that light after the first bash right here will catch him pretty much all the time. Even if you do it with a heavy, I can do the bash and I'll throw a heavy, or I'll throw a zone. You, it's just pretty much it's a big character a lot of button mashing i hate to say it that way but for the most part um, at least all the games that i've played it seems to be that way but there is some skill involved and you can react to some of the stuff and it'll help you out a little bit now i don't have the bot set up to do this in particular but i found this to be really useful so in the event of me being in my chain and i go to my bash but they actually end up dodging the first one after i let it go um, you can actually follow up. Let's see if I can get the bot to stay still, uh, right here. Oh, right here. Hold position. Sorry. I'll keep my distance. So, in the event where I throw any attack, heavy, light, zone, whatever, I can do the bash right here. And it goes through, right? Someone dodges it and they end up throwing an attack. They dodge attack that thing. Because of his zones, he's got high armor. So you can see the white flash, boom, right there and right there. Now, that high armor timing when it comes out is actually really early. So if I throw the light and I go to the bash and I whiff it, I can actually throw that zone and it'll catch just about any dodge attack and uh, anything but a bash dodge attack, I should say. So say even Orochi, you're fighting Orochi, you throw a light and you let this go and he dodge attacks it, but if you hit that zone immediately after that bash, that'll catch him. I wish I could have the bot set up to do it this way, but um, it would probably take me forever. I don't, I've never done that before, to be honest with you. So, But anyways, this the concept for me is the same, so I'll throw a heavy, I'll let the bash go, he dodge attacks it, and I throw the zone, and it'll just, he'll eat that, I think it's like 22 damage. Oh yeah, you can see right there, so... Or maybe something like that. I think it's 22. Somewhere around there, but it is pretty good, and it's a very strong move. Now, there is one other thing that I want to let you guys know, and this I know I can set the bot on to. Okay. I was able to get the uh, bot control set up here, so uh, just a little optimizing your damage and all that. If you have an opponent that throws a heavy, and you end up landing the parry on it, so he'll throw a heavy, instead of just hitting your normal light and going to your chain and whatnot, actually the best way to get your damage in is to dodge forward light. And that does 15. So, like I said, I have the damage log off. But if I do this, that does 12. And, you know, I go to my chain, whatever. But if you end up getting that parry off, you dodge forward light. That'll do 15. And then you can go to your chain. And that's going to give you actually the best value. One other thing that I wanted to show you guys is that uh, his zones. So with most characters, if you do a zone like Warden here, if he hits his zone button, which is uh, the light and heavy at the same time, um, he'll throw his zone and it's pretty quick. However... It's not the same compared to the Ocelotos, where as I can faint mines, even from the beginning. The second that I hit my zone button and I initiated, I can faint it. And it's not just the first part, but it's also the second part. And it's even to change the same thing. So if I do a light in a zone, I can faint that, or I can do light in a zone, but then faint the second one. Uh, that's going to be pretty good uh, if you're wanting to trade with something, you know, with anybody really, or if they're just going to try to attempt to parry it. Uh, it's pretty nice just to have a faintable zone. Uh, not a lot of characters have it. I think as far as we got right now, it should be Raider and uh, somebody else has slipped in my mind. Oh, and Yorn. But uh, I just kind of wanted to throw that in there just so you guys can, uh, just so you guys know. All right, and one other thing that I want to talk about is uh, when you get the punish for throwing someone on the ground. Now, I'm sure there is another trickier way where you can throw them. You could do like a light, heavy, light type of thing and keep going your combo. That might be it, might not be. But the most successful way that I've found it is it doesn't matter the direction that you throw your character. If you get that guard break off when you're out of stamina, if you throw two heavies, no matter what side, no matter which direction you throw them, uh, it's going to do good damage. So right there, that's 24 and 28. That's pretty good. And uh, there's no real possible way I see that you can mess up on that. Um, even if I throw forward, I can do left at the top, and it should be pretty good. Although I probably woke up a little bit earlier there. Let's actually try that again just to make sure 
I'm gonna hit the wall. We'll get some space just to double check. Yeah, right there. So, you know, there could be some special ways you could attack somebody when they're on the ground and you throw them out of stam. But for the most part, if you just want to confirm that damage, which is pretty good, just do two raw heavies and, uh, or just, you know, the first heavy and the second heavy. And that seems like it's going to be best bet. Now, one last thing I want to talk about is his stance. But just to clarify, I know I showed it earlier. Um, his finisher heavies are unblockable. I just want to clarify on that. And uh, even if you're in your chain, if you do the zones, then, uh, of course, they're hyper on the right. Which I know I mentioned earlier, but I just wanted to clarify that uh, you guys saw that they are uh, unblockable. Now, to move on, uh, we're talking about his stance. And this stance is primarily used for ganks or in 4v4s. So if you're in a duel and you're going to use this stance, I'd highly recommend uh, doing it a certain way. Unless you catch your opponent off guard, which, uh, depending on what skill tier you might be at, might be probable and might not. So... I believe by default on the keyboard, if you're playing PC on keyboard and mouse, it should be C. I changed my key bindings and on controller, it's some sort of stick down or something like that. You go to a hunter stance like that and it's pretty good. You move a little bit faster, but you only have one option out of this. And um, there's a lot of people talking about hoping he could dodge out of it and do something else. Because other than throwing one attack that I'm about to show you, uh, that's pretty much all he's got. Now anyways, what this is used for is pretty much for peeling or using as a, a good ganking tool in fours. So if I press uh, my guard break button while in this stance, I do nothing. If I hit the light button, I also do nothing. But if I hit my heavy, I do a lunge forward, which will do 16 initially, and then it'll do a follow-up 8. Now why it does that in particular, I'm not sure. There might be some reasoning behind it. I just, I have no idea. But it sets up a pretty good ganking tool. Uh, there's a good amount of hits done there, although... All someone has to do in order to negate all this is just simply block it, or they could parry it. But it's got some pretty good range. Um, you can see right there from a distance I can hit that guy, and I can also uh, just go right back into it. But I really can't do anything else other than just heavy from it. Now, if you are in a duel and you kind of want to try it, um, like I said, it's up to you if you guys want to do this or not. Um, if you're a good, decent ways away, and you're not actually going to be able to hit them when you do the lunge, so right about here, I'd say... If I hit my heavy and I let it go, I'm going to whiff the attack, but if I go into a zone, it's immediately going to chain uh, into my zone, and the hyper arm is going to be there, just like from earlier when I was talking about after the uh, bash. And if you do this, just boom, the hyper arm is right there, ready to trade with somebody. Um, but yeah, if you are in a duel, you keep your distance, although it might be unlikely because this far away in a duel, uh, you don't really see that all the time. But you let the heavy go, and you just follow up with the zone if they try to uh, do something special because they say... Uh, Oh, well, he whiffed his, uh, he whiffed this, so I'm going to attack him now, but then you hit them with a the solid 22 zone. So that's pretty good damage right there, but other than that, you guys, that's pretty much all the Ocelotl has to offer when it comes to duels and ganking. There might be some other punishes and stuff like that that I may have missed, but uh, it is only, as of currently making this video, it is the first week of playing. But uh, I'm going to hop into some duels, and I'm going to show you guys some of this stuff, and hopefully it'll all work out, so you guys can... Uh, see how what I showed you here applies to what's going to happen in game but uh yeah let's get into it all right so lucky enough I wasn't you know I didn't get another ocelot and I'm going to do one take at this so hopefully all goes well let's see if I keep my distance and I'll do the uh well uh, I guess that didn't work however I'm going to try to get my bash and trade with them Ooh, see I could have let it go right there if I wasn't a goober we're gonna do it again. Ooh. Oh, he's trying to trade it out or he's trying to deflect it. You can see the concept right there. It works pretty well. Just gonna paint this one. Nothing. Okay. Ooh, nice. Let's see if we get a light parry here. Ooh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Ooh, throw it. Yeah. I kind of figured he was playing a little aggressive right there. So we'll take it, though. I kind of wanted to create more distance in the beginning where I could show you guys I could do that and then trade it out. I'm not going to do it right again because he might anticipate what my next move may be. But we're going to try it. We're going to see how it goes. Like I said, the stance is not really used in ones. Ooh. Oh, nice. Go for a double bash. Nice. 
And we'll do a uh, neutral bash if we can. 10 damage right there. Don't need to input anything afterwards. Looks like we got a little bit of salt. That's okay. That's okay. First week in the new hero, we'll be all right. Um, but don't need to input anything else after that. It's just a solid 10 damage. And uh, do what you will with that. Let's see. He's looking a little aggressive here, I think. Uh, I can't faint the zone right there. Let's see if we can. Ooh, trade that one out. I was about to say, let these zones go. Nice. Follow up light. Oh, nope. There we go. Paint the unblockable. Nice. Okay, we're gonna try to use these bashes here. Okay. Nice. Ooh, got me with that one. That was pretty good. Um, you know, for the most part, when it comes to the zones, there's no real pressure there other than just trading with it or if someone's just trying to pair a regular heavy because there's no special property other than the primer. It's like throwing out a regular heavy. So you may not get a whole lot of people that will react when it comes to using stuff like this. However, ooh, that's a nice deflect right there. Nice. Ooh. Messed up on that one. Not a stam. There we go. Let's see if we get a. Uh oh. Nice. Let it go. Let it go again. Ooh. I think we just got lucky with that bit right there. But for the most part, I just kind of wanted to show you guys everything that I was talking about. We got some good trades after the bash, which is pretty good, but after every hammer parry, if I got any there, I didn't do no dodge for the light, but. We'll be okay. Anyways, good fight, and I hope you guys enjoyed.